So we are looking at the uh, product viability and as you have designed your product you want to understand how and want to show to your potential uh, funders uh, or you want to borrow some capital how your product is viable in terms of financial so these lecture notes uh, are, uh, the lecture notes are prepared for the design for uh, capsule design uh, where you have to work in a group to design a product and prepare the financial viability analysis of the product so we'll go through uh, the steps and I hope you will benefit from this so you have designed a product and uh, and then you wanted to know whether it will be successful in the market so assuming that you have designed the product uh, tested and certified okay and then you are going to set up a small department or cost center or you want to set up a business unit to take your product to the market so how much will it cost for you to put your product into the market where the in the form of minimum viable product i.e the boat product can be used uh, physically or virtually either you want to put the product into the uh, online market uh, in this class we will prepare uh, somewhat a small budget a preparatory budget to cover this and from there uh, we will assume a profit margin and then finally uh, also carry out the uh, cash flow analysis before we calculate the return of investment okay uh, in order to do this we have to estimate uh, the sales uh, uh, how much we can sell the product or you have to estimate the sales and this is perhaps uh, the biggest unknown in our model so let's talk about this a little bit because what we have done here is basically to um, plan or to design or to assume certain numbers and therefore we need to understand the strength and the weaknesses of our model so uh, what we present is a model the way we think how the business uh, would be run okay so when you have designed something uh, you have to manufacture it you have to assemble it you have to test it you have to package it put it in a warehouse somewhere where you wait for the next order you to ship it out you have to install it and carry out training and after that you have to make some report in terms of accounting and then you also have to put some insurance and then there is this post market thing that you have to look after the product after certain life you give a warranty of one year or two years or five years you have to have a warranty system and you have to provide services for the product uh, if the product break down where do the customers go um, and uh, repair the product and you have a management team to manage all these processes okay so there's a lot of things that we need to do <coughs> and these are basically our source of cost to the plan that we have all right so let's look uh, at each so when we manufacture the parts okay uh, because of the most of the time in your study of manufacturing processes you concentrated more on the machines to be used but in the product development uh, we have to minimize our uh, cash flow uh, that is not related to the bring the product to the market so we sort of wanted to not to buy the machine but rather we have to use the services to bring the product to the market so we must limit our capital our money to bring the product to the market not to buy machines so what we do is we usually source out for parts okay so so that it is ready to assemble or it comes in pre-assemble okay so what you do is you draw you send the drawing to the fabricators and then you get the quotation okay how much does it cost and then you do the assembly uh, in your shop so you minimize in-house machining so you don't buy machines 
not to buy machines. Okay? We don't buy machines whenever possible. Okay? We source out. Source out. So that's the key thing, yeah? So when you have done the manufacturing part and the parts have arrived to your shop, you have to do assembly. Okay, so most of the components can be assembled by your team. From here, you can estimate the time needed for the assembly work and whether you really need a, a line set up. If it is intermittent, when the quantity is low, uh, would you do it with your team? Okay, uh, it depends on the number of units. Uh, if you have a 100 unit a month, perhaps you can do your own assembly. But if you have 10,000 unit a month, it may not be uh, feasible for you to do it more so if you have a uh, 100,000 unit a month. You need a specific, or you might need to subcontract out the manufacturing. But we are, at the beginning of our business cycle, we have very low numbers. Okay, So, uh, one of the things that uh, is important for us is to estimate the cost involved in assembly. So, if you employ a typical worker, put the salary, which include the employee prov employer provident funds, uh, SOXO, uh, maybe at 2,500 per month. For diploma holder for three thousand, and for degree holder three thousand five, and expect annual increase of salary of about five to seven percent a year, and if possible, put two months bonus. Uh, I've seen this being applied in many of the uh, estimation of the cost uh, of products. Uh, a few years back, it's normal for uh, industry to give two months salary, at, uh, in terms of bonus. For so in total, you have fourteen months salaries for for year operation. This is just as a guideline and testing is important make sure you have a testing line you have to test your product before you pack it up yeah so it's just simpler like if you have a lamp you're producing uh, lamp bulbs and uh, make sure you can test that each of the bulbs uh, would uh, be lighting produce enough light lights when you apply electricity to that so there is a small test so, so it's a QC kind of thing so that you don't have problems with shipping out defective products. So assembly, these are all costs associated with the development of your product. Testing uh, of a product cannot be sourced out because you need to because you need to carry out remedial, you need to repair the work. Uh, so after you, you found out that the product is not working. So usually you just use a simple functional test is required. For example, switching on the device and see that it is working as designed. Or, uh, so in this case, you need some form of minimal investment, your power supply, instrumentations, and the recording device. So this is part of your quality control, quality assurance. Uh, if you are ISO certified, your measuring device must also be certified, uh, and in, you have to send it out for annual calibration. And these are all costly processes. Uh, packaging. Uh, packaging is needed to protect the product during shipping and display. Okay. Packaging can be designed to absorb certain level of shocks. Uh, in medical device, packaging must be tested and certified that it will remain sterile within storage. For example, if you want to keep this, the device for 24 months, it has to be tested. Uh, for for the, the packaging has got to be tested under accelerated uh, test. So packaging also covers product instru instruction to use. Okay, sometimes you put some uh, how to use instructions on the packaging. Uh, for example, an important fact like the you need to have a 240 volt AC supply. Uh, just to uh, tease your mind, uh, how would you ensure that each pack holds, has all the required parts? Uh, how would IKEA ensure that not even one screw is missing in the packaging? Yeah, so we open up IKEA box. There's a lot of things there, but it seems that they have never missed a, even a screw. So is there a machine to do it? What is the way of doing it? So that's packaging. It's, uh, you have to pay for it. And then there is uh, this warehousing. Uh, not all manufacturing can be done in just in time concept. Uh, uh, buffers can be used to manage uneven demand. Uh, but too much buffer can be wasteful. Uh, after packaging, the product is bundled and wrapped and put on a crate in the warehouse ready for shipping. So... Uh, this is a new term, drop shipping. Do you? Uh, it would be good if you can do some study on this. What do you mean by drop shipping? Again, in certain cases, you can use third party to manage your warehousing and shipping. But there is a minimum quantity to this. 
for this class you just allocate a certain space in your shop as a store or warehousing facility yeah and then uh, you have to do installation or training for some large products for example tractors and machineries uh, the seller is responsible for installation uh, you have to provide training uh, you have to provide and prove that the machine performed as inten intended. This is known as commissioning. Sometimes training takes a long, uh, a long time, maybe a week, just to make sure that the guys uh, or the, the, the customer really knows how to use the machine. Okay, and that will take a lot of, you have to cost that out. Yeah? For, like, uh, so, so for this type of product, this large product, or even like solar panels, uh, you have to have people to cover this operation. Okay, and they need some assets to do to do training and installation. Okay, van tools etc. to carry out this task, uh, and then you have to pay for their lodging, where they want to stay in the hotel, and you have to pay for traveling allowance. And they are, they are, uh, that must be accounted for. So, so be aware of this when you uh, prepare your cash flow. And then the, I lumped all these other things, which is not related to the product, but it's about managing, uh, which I put accounting, uh, post-market, what you do, post-market, sometimes called market surveillance, what happened to the product in the market. And then you have got this warranty, you've got services, you got management, etc. Uh, this is a one sum, lump sum money that you have to put aside to have all the management services covered for. Uh, and in accounting, they have a term for it, but for us, just put it as, as a management. So most importantly, the accountant will prepare your annual statement that you have to submit. As a company, we are required by law to submit our uh, annual statement. Okay, So you need an, a, a, a certified accountant to do that. Uh, and then you have to edit, somebody has to audit your your. Um, your statement and then the warranty is the post market operations that must be, must be covered for uh, what is the product failure rate do you expect uh, and then what if you don't cover the warranty cost yeah so if you expect uh, uh, five out of a thousand product will be have some warranty issues so you need somebody to cover that and you have to cost that out okay uh, so management is needed to cover the human resources Somebody has to prepare for the uh, financial statement and then the SOXO statement, EPF statement, uh, cover the utilities, pay for the security, and then pay for the insurance, and purchasing and follow up, and all those things uh, is, a, is, is under management. Okay, So uh, for a small company, you can put this as uh, 30000 per annum uh, to pay outside people for the accounting, uh, auditing, company secretary, and insurance. This is a... Um, this is still uh, quite low, but as a beginning, we just put this at thirty thousand per annum. Or you want to, uh, if you appoint a, a full-time uh, bookkeeper, it's, it's a, a bit more expensive. So, uh, but these are things that we can buy from outside, like uh, auditing, company secretary, and, and insurance. So before you before you do ROI, okay, before you can do ROI, you need to do the cash flow analysis. Okay, so cash flow analysis allows you to see how much money is needed to cover the expenses and whether the revenue is enough to cover the operation. Uh, it is important for you to, sh to ensure that you have enough capital, the modal and chukup, to operate until your cash flow is positive, until you generate enough income to sustain your operation. Uh, profit is only after the revenue stream is stable. Uh, and also from the analysis, we can see how long does it take for the business to stand on its own and also the need to estimate how much initial capital that you need to raise from borrowing whether you have to borrow or you have to um, get the you have to get the some the money from somewhere and that is why uh, there are grants from the government and also uh, loan facilities from from the banks but these are not not easy to get yeah? it's, it's something that you have to show your business plan and sometimes you have to mortgage or uh, to have uh, something to cover your loan with so it's not a loan without any guarantee so uh, that's another story altogether but just to show that you have to have a cash flow analysis uh, before you carry out the return of investment calculation so let's just look at one business scenario okay 
because it's easier to tell it by a story. And then, so these three guys, Adam, Ng, and Jivan, decided that their product of powered stretcher can really help the paramedics in transferring the patient and reduce the back injury risk significantly. They have completed the design, so complete design completed, no more design work, and the prototype and tested the product and also has the product certified. So the product is approved to go to the market by the Malaysian Medical Device Authority, which meant that they can now sell the product to the health practitioners in Malaysia, including the government and private hospital. Uh, so to start off their business, they have to plan for the cash flow analysis, which will help them to monitor and track activities that can really affect their business and also to provide to their potential funders, okay, they, they want to borrow some money on the detailed operation of their business and let us study how they foresee their business operation. So this is an overall cost and you can look at here the manufacturing. Uh, so I've, div I, I've uh, uh, divided all the costs according to the activities. So the manufacturing or source for the parts, I divided that. So it cost them 6,000 ringgit for the parts for each unit of the stretcher being produced. Assembly, uh, they tend to hire three workers at 3,000 a uh, worker a month. So three times three is 9,000 a month to assemble. Testing, uh, and they test 10 units per month. And then it's part of the assembly and testing. Lah. Okay. And then packaging uh, is 200 per unit. Warehousing is 50, around 50 ringgit per unit. Shipping costs 750 ringgit per unit. Uh, installation and training is they cost it down like 500 per unit. This is difficult to cost down because it can lump all the units together. We are assuming that each unit is, sell, is sold separately and therefore each unit comes with the installation and the uh, one day training. And then there is accounting and insurance. Uh, we lump that into 12,000 per year or 1,000 per month. Okay. And then post-market warranty services, now we think that we have to allocate 1,250 ringgit per unit, so, and then uh, management and own salary, uh, so uh, this, those, two, two, those, two guy, those three guys pay themselves 4,000 ringgit per month, and for three person, it costs about 12,000 ringgit per month. Uh, so this assembly and testing is like, it's not like 10 units, yeah? So it's... So they assemble uh, that to a capacity, maximum capacity of. So we'll say that this is max capacity of 100 unit per year. So they can do 100 unit per year. So from the table shown here. We can see that the per unit cost of parts is 6,000. Assembly and testing is 900 per unit. Packaging and warehousing, shipping, training is 1,500 1, ringgit per unit. Post market warranty is 1,250 ringgit per unit. Other costs are combined, like labor and management. It's a combined management and labor that is 9,000 plus 12,000 is 21,000 per month. Rental is, I didn't put rental here. Yeah, rental here. Rental of the shop house, electrical, water, etc. at 8,000 per month. And we will also have a one-off purchase uh, of uh, RM80,000. But I will modify this number later on. Yeah. So there is one-off purchase. Uh, so uh, we will put that number as X here first. Later on, I will modify this number. So, this one-off purchase include whatever things that you need. You know, maybe you need some uh, things for you to work for the workshop and also for your office. Okay? So, let, in this case, we assume it's 80,000. We may might want to adjust this later on. So, uh, Adam and Lejiba decided that they had to make the sales projection for the next five years in order to prepare this business plan based on the budget. They know that they will not hire workers until they receive firm orders and they give themselves six months from the operation to secure the orders. This meant that they will only hire three workers after the six months. Before that, they will run the operation from a smaller shop house, which they rented for RM3000 per month with minimum upkeep 
and will pay themselves minimum salary of 2,500 per person just to keep the operation running. This is for the first six months. Yeah? By this time, you can imagine that they need to pay for the fuel and also display unit for demonstration. They decided to buy a second-hand ambulance for demo unit within the RM80,000 one-off one equipment purchase and they plan to visit at least five hospitals every week and after four months they would have demonstrated the unit to 80 hospitals which they expect to translate to sales of first year of about uh, certain units uh, 60 units for second year 80 units for the third year and 100 units for the fourth and fifth year yeah so 40 units for the first year so this is the five year sales projection first year 40 okay so it's 40, second year is 60, uh, third year is 80, uh, the fourth and fifth year is 100 each. That they achieve the limit, the capacity of their, their workshop, uh, 100 unit per year. So we have not discussed what is the right price for the product. So Adam, Ang and Jivan decided that their sales projection are realistic and on the lower side. Uh, they knew that they can push for higher sales number and also the potential of export market. But their focus is developing the business to cater for the local market. They knew that the market is ready for the power stretcher and they are thinking to price the unit at RM35,000. They also have to study the price sensitivity of the unit. This is, uh, yeah. so, and Adam used his connections, friends and relatives and asking around hospital management how much they are willing to pay for a power stretcher. In their marketing campaign, they have loaned the unit to hospital for one week to gain the customer feedback and to gain support from the potential customer. So this slide is telling you that 25,000 is the thing that they can sell their product for 25,000. So they will base um, uh, their projection on this, but they can also done a sensitivity analysis. So uh, one of the most difficult uh, data to get from any company is their cost. So and they have to, they think that 25,000 is a fair price for the unit in comparison to those other products in the market too. So they think 25,000 is something that they can sell. So here I have uh, like uh, translate all those actions into income versus expenses table. So column one is the year, column two is the income, uh, column three are the expenses. Column four is the profit or loss, expenses minus income. And cumulative is how much profit or loss that we have uh, accumulated in that year. So the first year, we are selling 40 units at 25,000 a unit. And that gives us a 1 million ringgit income. Expenses, remember I said that uh, different expenses. The first six months, they are not doing anything. So they pay themselves 2,500, Kali Tiga, 7.5, uh, 7,500. And then plus uh, another 3,000. That is, they, they're starting from a small shop house where they pay 3,000 a month and they live inside the shop house on the top floor and the bottom floor become their workshop and also their office. So for the first six months, they are running at 63,000. They need 63,000 to remain afloat. The remaining six months, they move to a new bigger shop lot and they pay themselves a full salary. Uh, that means that they have to pay 29,000 times 6. That gives us 174K. I have uh, increased the one-off equipment here uh, because just now I said 80,000 is not enough. So I put it here 263,000. So we need to buy the van and all other welding machines and all these things at about 263,000. And the expenses for the first year is 900,000. So the, the profit or loss is the income minus the expenses, so 1 million minus 900, so I've got a profit, a gross profit of 100,000, and that year I make a positive 100,000. Similarly, you can uh, repeat the same process. For second year, we sell 60 units, that give us 1.5 million, and then it cost us, uh, it cost them 848,000 to produce 60 units, and they have a profit of 652,000, and the cumulative profit is 752,000. And then the third year, they sell 80 units and so on. Their profit at that year is 952,000. And fourth year, their profit is 1.252 million. And then five years, uh, their profit is 
also 1.252 million and their cumulative profit is 4.2 million okay and they have a total income for over five years 9.5 million their expenses is 5.292 million and their gross profit is 4.208 million so this is the so-called the cash flow analysis from this cash flow you can see that they are already positive in the first year but it doesn't mean that they have enough money to pay for uh, for the operation in the second year what they have was just enough to add a hundred thousand and this hundred thousand is not enough to pay for the second year right so in the second year they need to have eight hundred forty eight thousand for this so they have to borrow some money to cover for the second year operation so in the second year operation they need to have 848,000 so I think if I were the company I will ask for two years operation loan which cost me about 1.78 million okay and then at the second year um, uh, in the second year we make a, a profit of 652,000 and then we have got uh, 752,000 uh, depending on the cash flow we pump the money into the third year operation uh, again uh, because you have to start uh, we need 1.048 uh, million uh, to cover for the second year operation all right so uh, that we expect the sales to be 2 million and then we make a profit loss but at that time we already have 1.7 million so 1.7 million means that there is enough money access for us to cover the fourth year operation okay so we might uh, don't have to borrow money after fourth year of operation in the first three years we need to borrow some money the money must come from somewhere and we need to borrow this amount of money so that's one way of reading uh, the cash flow analysis for the fourth year you got 2.926 million and five year our cumulative profit is four point so the numbers are total income 9.5 million expenses is 5.29 million and the profit loss is 4.208 million so let's look at the return of investment we have total investment of 5.29 million total income of 9.5 million we got total profit of 4.208 million so if is if i put my own money here it will be five so the roi is number three total profit divided by the total uh, investment so i put uh, uh, investment of 5.29 million over the three years that profit is 79.5 percent so from this simple analysis over the five years period the return of investment uh, is 79.5 percent and averaging 5 15.6 percent uh, per annum uh, from the cash flow analysis the business is expected to have positive cash flow from the first year of operation however this is not enough to cover the second year operation so capital injection is still required for the second year operation total capital that need to be raised to cover first and second year operation is 1.74 million our business is expected to be self-sustaining after the third year, in the third year, after the third year operation. As you can see just now, only in the fourth year that you don't have to borrow money. Okay? It doesn't mean that it is running at loss, but it is uh, still making a positive cash flow. So, there is, what are the weaknesses of analysis and what is your recommendation? Well, our analysis that we have assumed that the salary and all other costs remain constant over the five years period uh, are you willing to say that your salary will not grow for five years uh, also we have to take into account the risk of inflation price of materials go up price of electricity bills can go up and so on and so forth and then we have not payment of interest of the loans taken to run the business has not been taken into account so this is the weaknesses of the analysis as you can see that you can always input that into your uh, into your study uh, to increase the ROI uh, return of investment parametric analysis can be carried out by varying the unit price unit cost interest rates increase of salary bonuses and so on 
So you can run the sensitivity analysis and see what are the effect of these parameters to your ROI. Um, I would strongly recommend that we increase the unit price of to 2,500 in order to have a higher ROI. So I carried out. So those guys think that uh, by by increasing the unit price to um, uh, 20, 27,500 ringgit would increase the profit from uh, 4.2 million ringgit to 5.158 million. And this will increase ROI to 97.4% over 5 years or average of about 19.5%. Uh, this number is quite encouraging and the business can be considered feasible subjected to the assumptions made. Uh, large corporations might enjoy great success with ROI of 10% or even less uh, because small business owners usually have to take more risk. Most business experts advise buyers of typical small, small companies to look for ROI between 15% and 30%. So remember the weakness of our model. We did not take in account the increasing price, increasing salary, increasing tax. We haven't even looked into the tax uh, part of it. And so we need some accountant to <laughs> to prepare the detail of things. But gross, in terms of general, we have the idea of how we can make the cash flow analysis. So closure. Uh, we have prepared a simple cash flow analysis for the company for the next five years. Okay. Uh, from that cash flow analysis, uh, total sales is 380 units. So when you present, people are interested to look at this number at 9.5 million with a cost of 5.29 million and profit of 4.208 million. Uh, the annualized ROI over five years is 19.5%. This is by increasing the price to 27,000 at 20,700 per unit. Yeah? So I wanted you to look at other things also. In terms of social impact, when you do business like this, there is a social impact. You have created jobs for three engineers and three workers. So you have created six jobs and you created demand for materials, accounting and services and insurance services in the value at 5.29 million. This is what you have put into the system, the economy system now. You suddenly create a demand for, you create jobs and also demand for material worth 5.3 million. And if you pay tax, the average tax of 20% on the profit is RM 841,000. This, this is attributable to the government. You pay that to the government and you will have to pay for the social services, hospitals, police and, and so on and so forth. So in a way, you can see that when you prepare a cash flow like this, it allows your uh, yourself, the business, and also potential funders to see uh, how the business develops over time and what are the costs associated with it uh, and how long does it take for you to recover your money. Uh, this is a five, mi five years uh, projection. Uh, you can do a 10 years projection, but five years is very long. In terms of uh, in terms of business plan in this for this kind of product, you can talk about ten years and you can see that, yeah. After we can see that after after three years operation, we can and then fourth year we are already in the black. We can, but it, it doesn't mean uh, we are already self sustaining. Not in the black, we are already self sustaining. I.e., we don't need uh, any more loans to cover. We can stop uh, having loans and then it's enough to cover our own expenses and uh, and the system. Or the business can run on its own. But please uh, be reminded, what is the assumption? Okay, the biggest thing is a model, and the model is based on certain assumptions. Yeah, what happens if you cannot sell as much as you plan? What happens if people are not willing to pay for the price? What happens if people don't pay after they receive their product? What happens if your product have a lot of problems? What happens and so on and so forth? Business is full of risk, but here in the calculation of ROI, it has been simplified to just cover the sector of which you need to think about, do I have enough cash to run the business? 
Okay, guys. So with that, uh, I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you can always email me uh, uh, or WhatsApp me uh, for to ask any questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum.